Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wilkie, and I'm back with some more Dragalia Lost. I was actually able to get out work early, so I'm able to talk about the two you, two new units coming in, which is like one unit and a dragon, and the three that are getting buffs from Mana Spirals, which is Xanfried, Nefaria, and Cleo. Now, if you like my Dragalia stuff, and you end up liking this video, of course, please leave a like, because it shows support for me, and it also helps me grow. Uh, subscribe to me for more Jigalia stuff, and in general, a bunch of other games. I play a whole bunch of other stuff. But that's enough of that. Let's get into it. <laughs> I actually remembered for once. I actually end up forgetting a lot of times to ask for likes, and then my Jigalia stuff ends up being super viewed a lot, which I appreciate all the time. And then it ends up not getting as much likes as, like, Animal Crossing or something. It's really funny. Which, Animal Crossing has, like, half the view, so it's important to remember. If you like this, leave a like. Anyway, let's get into it. Today's first dude, he comes from the new event, which is called, I want to call it the Toriko event, A Dash of Disaster Part 1. Part 1's important, because you can see right here, um, it's this dude, and then when we go here, there's a girl, so good chance that there's going to be, a, the chef girl's going to be Part 2. Alright, let's see, Adventurer Valerio, I'll cook you up a perfect dish with a secret ingredient and shattered dreams. I would show the trailer, but the last time I showed the trailer, my... I got struck with a copyright strike, so I'm not doing that this time. But let's go into what he does. I don't know what he does. Uh, adventurous detail, wonderful chef, of unmatched culinary genius, once a knight retainer to princess of small kingdom of Norma Grestia, he shaved his blade to pursue more piquant passions. He's out to change the world one dish at a time. One moment, I'll be right back because I forgot to turn off. Uh, turn on, do not disturb. All right, back. All right, his skills are amuse bouche. I don't know how to print. I'm going to assume that a lot of this is French and I can't pronounce it at all. Uh, apologies. Deals wire damage to the enemy directly ahead and applies one of the following effects based on the user's current cooking source. Stance. Appetizer stance. Inflict frostbite and reduce enemy defense by 5% for 30 seconds. The defense reduction effect will not stack. Entree stance. Inflict stun and reduces enemy strength by 15% for 30 seconds and strength reduction effect will not stack. Desert Stance, Inflict Freeze. Bon Appetit applies one of the following effects to the entire team based on the user's current cooking stance. Appetizer Stance, increased defense by 15% for, for 15 seconds. And Inspiration by two stages, the defense increase will not stack. Entree Stance, increased critical rate by 10% for 15 seconds. And Inspiration by three stages, this critical rate increase will not stack. Desert Stance, increased strength by 8% for 15 seconds and Inspiration. By two, stages, by two stages, the strength increase will not stack. Go up ability strength 10%. Critical hit attack rate equals up. Increase attack rate by 10% for 20 seconds. Each time one of the users attacks is a critical hit. After activation, this ability will not activate again for 10 seconds. <sighs> Burn resistance 100%. Combo time plus 4. Whoa, is that new? <laughs> Extends the window between hitting an enemy and a combo counter resetting by 4 seconds. Okay... So, Valeria features a new functionality stance as you can actively change that allows you to adapt your fighting style based on the situation. By tapping a special icon that displays during battles, you can switch between appetizer stance, entree stance, and dessert stance. These stances change Valerio's attacks and skill effects. Wow, when Valerio's combo count is 20 or higher, his normal attacks will change so that he attacks enemies as if he were chopping vegetables. That's... that's freaking cool! His Amuse Bush skill will inflict frostbite on enemies and increase their defense. With his Bon Appetit skill, he can increase the entire team's defense and apply inspiration. Um, when it's combo count 20 or high, his normal attacks will change so that his attacks him as if he were doing prep work, and then when he's in dessert stance, it's as if he's stirring. Valeria's normal attacks will change the next time he makes a normal attack when his combo count is 20 or higher. So, does that mean you can choose? So. That's kind of nuts. So I'm going to assume you get to pick between these three stances and then you do your combo and then based on your combo, you're going to have, that's, hmm, you know what? <laughs> this guy sounds really fun. Uh, very interesting. I'm interested to see how he does. Let's get into the other guy. <laughs> food, food, Nimus. Let's go. Pancake Paradise restores HP to the users, raises the dragon gauge by 20%, and extends the shapeshift time by 5 seconds. Shapeshift time cannot exceed the maximum permitted time. Interesting, he's a support dragon. Strength and critical damage, but he's not. Wait, what? 
If the user is attuned to water, increase the strength by 45% and adds 55% to the modifier that applies crit damage. Hmm. This is a weird dragon. I don't know what to make of him, to be honest. Well, if he's crit based, I think that would go pretty good with um, Cerise, because Cerise currently, at least in my build, she uses um, Jean. But let me see how much Jean gives. Let me see. Yeah, 45 on critical rate by 20%. But that says critical rate, not based on how much critical damage you do. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It seems cool with the with a healing effect. To be honest, you never use Jean when you're using Cerise in my experience. Is that you automatically just use... Um, the only time I've ever used it is when I think I have to tank a red hit and that's about it. And sometimes it's not even for that. There's really no reason to ever use it. Um, but also, the part here that says it extends shapeshift time is actually kind of a bummer because you want to get out of it as soon as possible. At least if you're Cerise, that is. Um, interested to see how this dragon does. Now, obviously, both these units are going to be helping uh, water. One is a blade unit and the other one is a dragon. So that means HBH. This guy kind of can work into HBH. Um... I don't know if it's going to replace the current. So the current meta, as far as I'm concerned, or as far as I'm aware, for extreme... Um, let me show it just real quick, just so I can have a visual for what I'm talking about. Um, not Volksrath. Um, Advanced Dragon Trial. Hybrid Hanilda. So for this fight in specific... For this fight specifically, the... The team composition is two Cerises, one um, Gala Ellie, and then one Zhang. I believe that's how you pronounce her name, the healer lady. Healer lady. So there's no way that that dude's replacing Ellie, because you need Ellie and you need a Cerise, and you need basically all units together to make it so that you can tank the opening blast without dying. So, but to be honest, the extra Cerise, you might be able to sneak in with him. You know, oops, not my endeavors. You don't want to see that. He's interesting. I definitely want to see more of him um, before I make any like quick judgments on him. But honestly, he seems cool, even if he's not <laughs> super viable. Uh, I really like this. I really hope it ends up uh, playing really well, because that's the one thing that I'm not sure of. Um, now, here's a good question, because I'll... So here's the thing. Summoning on this banner? There's no real free summons for this. And there's, this is a part one, that means there's a part two. So I would wait a little bit to see if he's any good. You'll let let the whales who run those uh, events like crazy determine if a unit is like super good or not. Usually some people can tell by the kits themselves. I like to usually wait, that's my own personal thing. Um, so my advice is always like wait to do a summon. Like for example, don't expect the summon banner on this one. <laughs> Mainly because like in a, I think in a month, by next month, actually, when we get the um, this month in Dragalia, we're gonna know what the next Gala Banner is. And with Gala Banner, you need as much stuff as possible to kind of summon on it. So, hmm. Wait out is what my current thing is. There's also gonna be another summon banner, which is this one, uh, which is actually a crazy banner because it has Lafna, it has Delphi, who Delphi is insanely good for he for High Jupiter, the Dragon Trial for that. And it has uh, Nefaria who's getting her uh, Mana Spiral. So let's go over the Mana Spirals now. Okay. Xanfried. So this was kind of unexpected, at least for me. Uh, let's see. His updated thing is... Um, is this this updated thing? I'm trying to see. Yeah, it has to be. Deals more damage to the target. Yeah, right? Yeah, it has to be. Okay. Let's get into it. Uh, Dragon Frost Fang deals water damage to the target and nearby enemies and inflicts Frostbite. Frostbitten foes take extra damage. Guardian's Fury deals water damage to the enemies directly ahead. Increase the entire team strike by 20% for 20 seconds. And raises the Dragon Gauge if the attack connects. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. Very interesting. Not 100% sure where it would work, but... Uh, HP 15%, Dragon Claw. Oh, actually, with that <laughs> HP 15%, he might... Actually, let me do a double check to see if Ellie is, um... A, uh... 
She's not. She's defense. And you, for sure, my lass, are not HP. Know your skill. Hmm. Alright. I, I could see Xanfried kind of slotting into HPH just because of his pure boost and all that. Let me go back to what he does. At least make it run a little bit faster. You know, it's possible. Um, let me continue what he does. Dragon Claw 4. Each shapeshift increases strength. Ooh, that's kind of a... Um, okay. Opponent burn resistance 100%. Reduces susceptibility to burning by 100%. When the user is hit by an attack that would have inflicted burning on them, their strength is increased by 15% for 10 seconds. After activation, the skill buff will not activate again for 10 seconds. And dragon time increased by 25%. Ooh, so he's kind of based around dragoning a whole bunch. He's basically like Water Mim. Um, and the problem with dragons is that currently, except for one build that was this kind of discovered by Richard and his friends, dragoning is kind of not the greatest at the moment. So, hmm, interesting. I don't know if he fits into High Brunhilde or not. I'd wait to see if there's going to be like a, um, you know, the next Aguido uprising might be water-based, and if so, he might find a place there. Maybe that's the early signs of, like, waters being buffed next, but, you know, hard to know. Let's go on to the other ones. Nefaria. Knight of, Antiqu Din Knight of Antiquity. Deal shadow damage to the target and nearby enemies and inflict poison damage. Blinding or poisoned foes take extra damage. Twilight Oblivion activates Twilight Arrows. The user's next force strike will deal extra damage. It inflicts blindness and dispels one enemy buff. Skill haste 15%, full HP equals poison and blindness 60%, increase the chance of inflicting poison and blindness by 60% when the HP is full, reduces susceptibility by, to paralysis by 100% when the user is hit by one attack, by an attack that would have para paralyzed them, their strength is increased by 15% for 10 seconds, After activating this buff will not activate again for 10, 15 seconds. Poison and Blind Buff Punisher increase the damage to poison enemies by 30% and blinded enemies by 40%. Alright. I think Renafari is finally usable after not being useful since she basically launched in the game day one. Um, she basically fits in perfectly with Shadow. The only problem is that I don't know who she replaces on High Jupiter because I haven't played enough of it. She does seem pretty damn solid because Blind is really good and Poison as... I just mentioned is kind of where the there's two kind of metas as far as I know for Shadow. It's the Galicleo cheese meme meta, which has been relevant since Galicleo has been released and is not dead. And there's Poison meta, which is where run by kind of Delphi and all those other kind of dudes that recently got their mana spirals, Lafna and all those other um, dudes like that. So interesting. Let's move on to the last unit. Woo, Cleo. Elder Cure restores HP to all allies and removes paralysis. Ancient Aegis, I guess, increase the entire team's defense by 25% for 15 seconds and gradually recovers their HP for 15 seconds. Uh, uh, recovery bonus up by 20%. Magical Reduction fills 100% of skill gauge at the start of quest. Using Elder Cure grants the user the Dispel Strike effect. When this effect is active, the user's next force strike will dispel one enemy buff. This effect cannot stack and will be consumed on use. Reduces paralysis, basically the same thing I've been reading, but it's with paralysis. HP 70% equal defense plus 15%. Really good. Probably one of the best healers in the game now, I think, with that kind of buff. The only, but to be fair, her only really other um, competition was. Where are you? Was, was Verica. So. She seems pretty good. She also feels like she might be built up for... So here's the other thing. The next thing that's coming is the Aguido Uprising for Light. Here it is. I expect her to be useful in this for sure. Um, Alright. That's basically it. I think all good buffs. I think I'm kind of... The only buff I'm kind of iffy on is um, Xanfried, but that's only because I need to see more of him. He's definitely usable now. Which is the big problem with him beforehand was that he kind of sucked. But now he doesn't suck so much. Uh, which is good. That's always good. Just to be 100% sure that these are actual buffs, I'm going to check to see that he doesn't currently have that. And I've just been making myself look like a damn fool this entire time. Okay, no. See, this was the problem with his old skill was that um, Ellie had this and had it better on skill 1. He used to just increase the entire party strength by 15% for 15 seconds, which is not good. 
just not good in general. Yeah, this is a clear, he got, he got super buffed. Like even though his minus barrel is not 100% on here, there's no denying that that's a good buff. All right, everyone. That's the end of today's video. I hope you liked it. Um, tell me how you feel about these units. Maybe I missed something or I'm not seeing something. I'm glad to hear it. Um, remember to subscribe to me for more Dragalia stuff. I also play a lot of um, other gotchas. I play Dragon Ball Legends. I sometimes play Dokkan. I say I play Dragon Ball Legends, but I haven't uploaded a video in there for a very long time. Um, I play One Piece Bounty Rush. I'm currently doing a Pokemon Nuzlocke, which you should, you should check out. If you made it this far, it should show up right here. I don't know if it's already on the screen or not, but whatever. Uh, that's a whole lot of fun. So yeah, that's the end of today's video, and I'll see you guys for the next video. Oh, also, then if you're listening to this, chances are I will be releasing a, a Asanya video, but it's gonna be super old by the time you hear this, so whatever. Just know that if you made it this far, now you know that. All right, everyone, until next time, I'm Wookie, and this is goodbye. Bye.